here I can say, I configure the minimum resources for this pool is 20 GB, yeah? which is actually more than the fair share, because the fair share was originally 10. And so what Hadoop will try to do, it will first, before it serves anyone, it will try to fulfill that main resources, and then whatever you have left, that is then redistributed uh, across the remaining pools. Can you do it in percentage as well? Yes. Yeah. It, well, if uh, if you uh, if you if you so basically what I can do here, and we will see it later. I can say here 40 GB and 10 GB. Yeah. And then what it will do, you you claim more than available, it will then percentage-wise redistribute it. So this is what uh, main resources allow you to do, and so you can guarantee uh, at least uh, a specific amount of resources to a specific uh, pool, uh, and this is in case if you need to fulfill a certain SLA or something. Even though I have main resources uh, specified to this pool, if I don't submit anything in that pool, then uh, those resources are redistributed across other active pools. It's a risk, right? uh -huh. <laughs> patience, patience. <laughs> all your answers, all your questions will be answered. Um, because if I if I would not do that, then I would allocate 20 GB. But if products, if for a whole day production doesn't run anything then those uh, resources are there sitting idle and I'm not fully utilizing my cluster. Yeah. So this is the reason, one, uh, the reason why, since there's nothing in production, we might as well reassign those resources to uh, uh, other stuff that is running. Okay? So far so good, right? No questions, please. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, and we will come to that. So, uh, what happens if I then now? Uh, what happens now if I then suddenly submit here? We will come to that. Okay. Now, and this was the percentage-wise bit. So basically, what I can do, what happens here is now I only have 30 GB. Yeah. I specify here min resources 50 GB because that uh, I want some guarantee. But research pool now is also configured, but they say, well, we need minimum 25 GB. So what happens then is these two uh, are, are, are first fulfilled. This is the first uh, that Hadoop tries to fulfill. But since 75 is more than it's available, it will proportionally distribute uh, those resources according them. So in this, according to the min resources. So here we have twice as much uh, as here as min resources, so we will uh, distribute them accordingly. So here we will assign 20 GB, 10 GB, and this is then twice as much that's there. And so all 30 GB is used up, and sorry for Bob, but at this moment in time we have nothing for him. But it didn't have the main resource also. Sorry? Because it didn't find the main resource. Yes, because he doesn't have any main resources. But and if so he, if he had main resources, then all the other Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we good so far? Alright. Some other stuff. Um if we have main resources which is below the uh, the fair uh, fair share, then nothing changes. Then everything is just equally uh, uh, distributed across. Because in in the fair share is more than the min resources. So from then on, once the min resources are fulfilled, then Hadoop still tries to maintain a fair share across all the pools. Okay. So, and here we come to the weight thing. <laughs> okay. 
So, uh, so now what happens in this case, everybody has the same weight and is considered equal, right? In, uh, in the fair scheduler, you can also add a weight to a specific pool. So, uh, so what happens is that a pool with a higher weight yeah, will get more resources uh, assigned during uh, the allocations of the resources to the different pools. So in case if you look at the glass of waters, then if you add a, a, a weight of two, then you get twice as wide a glass or a pool. And then I have a wider pool, but it still tries to maintain a fair share across my different pools and the fair share in terms of height. So that means that uh, when I reallocate resources, yeah, then the allocation would be 2, 1, 1. So if I have uh, four uh, gigabytes uh, spare memory, then this he will get two gigabytes, he will get one, and he will get one. So in that way, it will then re, uh, redistribute. Yeah. Obviously also, min resources still apply. So that is uh, that is the single resource fairness. Yeah. So in the previous slide, uh, there at the last for Bob, min resource is not given, but only the weight is given. Is it something like weight rules? No, min resources has priority over weight. <laughs> Okay, so main resources needs to be first fulfilled. Yeah. So if say if I had set main resources thirty here, oh. yeah, then this pool will be full and both will be empty. Got it. Yeah. So main resources first. Main no. first. The main resources has higher priority. Higher. Yeah. Okay. All right. That is single resource fairness. Yeah. So we. The, we uh, allocate the resources across our pools based on memory only. Now we have dominant resource fairness. That means uh, you take into account both uh, memory and uh, the course as well. And what happens is you will uh, allocate the resources, the requested resource, based on the dominant resource. So what does that mean? Yeah? So dominant resource fairness. So this is an example. So we have uh, Alice, which is here. Alice is assigned 6 GB and uh, 3 cores uh, uh, running. So that typically would mean maybe 3, uh, three mappers, 2 GB each. Yeah. Bob currently has 4GB, two cores, yeah, uh, running. Okay. So when a next uh, resource is requested, uh, a next container is requested, who will uh, receive uh, the next container? In this case, it will be Bob. Yeah. Why Bob? Because Bob has less than... Uh, uh, than Alice, yeah, in both memory and course. So the next container it will be assigned to uh, to Bob. Yeah. 